What if you forgot everything about a trip after coming home? Would you still go? It's been three weeks since I sold everything to travel the world. I went from a big city to the small town of Grenoble, France. Living in France for the short time has taught me a lot about French culture, about myself, and how travel leaves a lasting impression. I'll explain as I hike to the Fort of Bastille. So the first thing that I really learned was this saying, North Americans see the weekend as a break from the work week, whereas the French see the work week as an interruption to the weekend. See, when we got here, you know, it was the weekend and so everybody was out, they were drinking, they were eating, they were having a good time. There's tons of people all over the place. And I thought, oh, okay, well, it's the weekend, right? Come Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, it's the same thing, just after work hours. Everybody here is doing this every day. And when I heard that maxim, I really started to get an idea of what French culture is really like. You know, French culture is very different than North American culture and work is kind of a secondary aspect for them. You can see some of this work being a secondary thing when it comes to the times people wake up and the time everything opens. Sundays, everything is closed. And so you start to realize that waking up and getting in as many hours as possible, getting into the office as soon as possible is not a priority. It's not a thought whatsoever. So I guess you could say I could learn something off that. You know, eventually one day when I stop traveling or you know, later on in life to, you know, kind of remember the way the French do it and make sure I have time to myself and times with the people I love and that kind of stuff. It's, you know, there's a lot of important lessons. When I approached these stairs, I realized why everybody told me to take the ramp. Every single one of these stairs was crooked and jagged and broken and made it quite difficult to climb. So the second thing that I've learned here in France is how critical nature is to their way of life and the lifestyle here. It's almost like during the week is how we treat in North America our weekends. They do their drinking and their partying and they have fun. They go out to dinner, they relax. And come the weekends, they get out and they get into nature and you know they enjoy time with their family and maybe do some chores and things like that. But yeah, you see a lot of a lot of people walking up and down the hill and running and everybody's got a bike here and people on the weekends you they pack up their skis, go skiing somewhere. So going back to it, it really shows again that maxim. You know, French see the work week as an interruption to their weekend. But yeah, so I thought I'd sort of participate in some of that too by doing this hike rather than waiting the few days for the gondola to open up. Well, found a bit of a spot to sit down and relax for a few minutes because this is just, whew, I knew it would be tough, but man. So anyway, these last couple of points about you know, the French getting out in nature and prioritizing their social life leads them into, you know, this next point of everybody's very friendly here. For example, in my first video here, first living abroad vlog, you know, I said how being Canadian gets you a free shot and I didn't really elaborate on that story at all, but they're famous here for a liquor called uh, Chartreuse and this, this mountain I'm hiking up is actually part of the Chartreuse mountain or mountain range I'm not quite sure but anyway I'm gonna be doing a video on chartreuse eventually here but anyways like oh you're you're here have you tried chartreuse yet like no we haven't he's like well you you have to try it pours us a shot and just gives it to us this kind of friendliness and openness that everybody has here and I think it's a lot of it's because of the way they prioritize their social lives and getting out in nature and experiencing all these new things and I think to some degree that is just a small town thing no matter where you go in the world. Like smaller communities just tend to be a little bit more open, but you know, the French have a bit of a reputation because of Paris that they're not very friendly, but frankly, I think that's just part of a big city and a tourist kind of place. You end up with that kind of situation where, you know, people just kind of have enough of the tourists and they don't want to deal with English speakers because they know you're just a short term prospect. But so I guess some of that is what you know, Grenoble and some of these small towns like Annecy has taught me. It's taught me to get out in nature a little bit more, not really necessarily look to a city to entertain you. 
but to find some of your own entertainment. By this point in the hike, I finally started to approach the actual fort. I'd start walking into tunnels and different hidden staircases, and it started to actually get quite a bit more interesting. There was all kinds of little cubby holes and nooks and crannies to explore with all kinds of amazing views out into the city. Traveling is challenging. I've been here about three weeks now, and it just seems like we make mistake after mistake. And like, for example, we went into the grocery store and bought some things and because we can't read the packaging we you know end up buying things that we didn't intend that we can't really cook or can't really use or just frankly don't taste good and you know that's sort of hard to contend with the the language I knew the language barrier would be a barrier but I didn't quite think this big of one see we've also made some mistakes culturally like we didn't really know that it was polite to, when you walk into a place to make sure you say hello or good evening or some sort of address and the same when you walk away you say au revoir or bonsoir or, or something of the sort and we can tell that we got worse service because we weren't doing this and you know the last thing you want to do when you go somewhere is to insult somebody and to you know come across as arrogant or ignorant of their culture i wasn't quite prepared i knew there would be you know mistakes and i knew there would be stumbling blocks but you know, it sort of caught up to me a little bit about how challenging it really is to travel like this and especially to live as a nomad. Like, for example, in our Airbnb, it's, you know, a nice place, but they don't have all the cooking utensils. You don't have all the seasonings and all these things to cook good meals like you're used to when you have a home. And so that's, you know, something I really had to adapt to. So it's taught me to be a little bit more versatile and more flexible with, you know, the way I look at things. So with this million dollar view in the background my next big point's about you know money this you know with this trip has taught me how to budget and manage my money a little bit better because i'm i'm living on a shoestring budget i'm not rich i can't afford to you know spend luxuriously and live luxuriously and you know a lot of these mistakes and challenges that i've already talked about they make a lot of this very tricky you know every time you make a mistake it's cha-ching 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 over and over you know, I had a stable job. I worked in construction, made decent money. I had a home and you now fortunately with these small towns, you it is a lot cheaper, but you know, that doesn't, you know, mean your money stretches infinitely further. It's only a little bit further. France is still a, you know, a modern country within the EU that uses the euro, which doesn't work phenomenally to the Canadian dollar. So, you know, I have to be a little bit careful and you know, I'm grateful for these experiences too. These are learning experiences. I passed through this wooden door walked up the staircase, and finally got a full view of the top of the fort. But unfortunately, it wasn't the top of the hike. This place just gets more and more amazing as you go up. All these little tunnels and, you know, you can definitely tell it was an old fort. And it's just really freaking cool, like really, really freaking cool. So this trip has really taught me to slow down because, you know, you kind of go on something like this thinking it's going to be a vacation and it is but it's not a vacation in the typical one or two week vacation that you would typically take where you go bang 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 you gotta to rush to see the next thing and you know you don't want to waste any time because you spent a lot of money and that to get here now I have tons of time to work with and I have to slow down and especially like on this hike like I've taken a, a good number of breaks because I you know I can't exhaust myself I can't ruin the next couple of days and I think these are lessons that I can take with me into the future and I'll always remember and that's part of why I'm doing this living abroad vlog is you know I want to teach myself things and hopefully share it with others but you know for my own future it'll be good to know. I kept walking up staircases and I knew I was approaching the top. I kept turning around to see my progress and to see the fort from the top down angle and it was amazingly impressive. As we approach the top, I must mention, I've never hiked a mountain before. So this is a first for me, it's an unknown. As I said, I wanna have, go to things that are a little bit obscure and out of the way. I wanna challenge myself and not just go to new places, but experience new things. And this is definitely a new experience for me and I'm loving it. I've always wanted to hike a mountain. You know, it's getting me to reflect and it's teaching me things along the way, which I think is almost a more valuable part. Or, you know, that's why people do things like hiking Kilimanjaro and Mount Everest. This is the first experience since being here where it just feels totally new and what I wanted to do. And, 
Now this has taught me to, to again take the road less traveled by. I kind of say it like a bit of a cliche, but it's true. Especially this route has been, been sort of quiet and that because people don't use the, the old stairs. They, Use the ramps or the new one. Made sure to pause my hike and explore every single nook and cranny. I'd walk down every corridor and every alley to make sure that I seen everything there was to see. I'd walk until there was a dead end because I didn't want to miss anything. For the most part, because of the functionality of the fort, most of it looked pretty much the same. It wasn't exactly designed to be a tourist hot spot. Finally, after one last staircase, I finally made it to the top. One more staircase, and I got the perfect view. I made it. What a view. Feels good. You know, I've explained what, you know, France has taught me, and what small town France especially has taught me, and about the way the French live and their work-life balance and their social lives, their how in touch they are with nature. And then talked about some of my own challenges and some of what France has taught me personally. And I think these challenges are really, they're really worth it. They're worth it for the views like this. You know, this is, this is what I came here for. You know, I guess I'll always remember all these skills, right, about you know, connecting with nature, connecting with family, you know, making sure that work doesn't overwhelm you and trying to learn from your mistakes and, you know, not let it cost you too much, but, you know, not being afraid to make them. I guess this, at the end of the day, is what small town France has taught me. It's, it's all these kinds of little lessons. So to answer the question at the start of the video, if you forgot everything at the end of a trip, would you still go? I don't think I would. The things you see and the things you try the experiences you have, and of course, the things you learn, are the best part of travel. I want to keep those things with me forever. I don't know about you, but that's just me. Well guys, I think it's time to head back down. If you had a good time, if you learned something today, please consider subscribing. This is one of the, the hardest things I've, I've done. Um, I've learned a lot about myself, about pushing myself, and, and I hope you learned something too. Um, Please, if you like the video, hit the like button. Consider subscribing. I, I'm going to be posting two times a week for the foreseeable future. Until next time, we'll see you.